How many people do you know who struggle with their health? Chances are, whether they show it or not, most of the people in your life do. And chances are, you're one of them. Whether you're dealing with anxiety, depression, endometriosis, acne, eczema, autoimmune, thyroid, Lyme, brain fog, fatigue, or any other symptom or condition, you're far from alone. Living with symptoms has become the new normal. So no more guessing games. It's time to get answers. Welcome to the Medical Medium Podcast. I'm Anthony William. We're talking about supplements problematic and damaging supplements. What a lot of people don't know is that as they're ticking upward with their healing process and trying to move forward, they're taking something or doing something that's ticking them downward, down the scale instead of up the scale. They're not healing as fast as they need to, or they stopped healing at all, or they're just being tricked and duped and they're in this intermittent process where what they're taking is eventually just taking them downhill. There are things people are taking that are doing the opposite of what they think they're doing for them. The question is, are you ready for the truth? A big part of why people are sick these days is toxic heavy metals. So many people are inundated with toxic heavy metals. Their systems are. It's in their brain, it's in their liver, it's in their spleen, pancreas, it's in their skin, it's in their intestinal tract, it's in their colon. People have a lot of toxic heavy metals. Mercury, lead, arsenic, cadmium, that's just to name a few. Aluminum, steel, yes, even steel. There's a lot of toxic heavy metals in people's bodies, including platinum, Plus, there's something called alloys. Industries mix metals of all different kinds, and they make alloys. And a lot of people have a blend of alloy in them. And not only do they have that, they have all these different metals in them that become an alloy inside their body over time. Metals eventually oxidize inside our body. When they oxidize, they leach, and more metal spreads because of it. Short circuits our brain. It travels through our bloodstream. Metals are not good for us. So that leads us to number one on the problematic and damaging supplement list, which is alkaline ionizer water machines. These machines create supplemental water. Now what's interesting is there are metal plates inside these machines and they corrode and oxidize over time, slowly leaching oxidized metal byproducts and metal nanoparticles into the water. Regardless of the brand or the machine, this is metal leaching into the water over time. If you take apart these machines years later, you'll see the metal plates. Something funny's going on. They don't stay perfect. They start to corrode in little spots on the plates. Sad part? All those years you were drinking your ionized water, all that byproduct went inside your body. The other thing is water has a living element to it. It's alive. It's living. But as it's pumped through pipes, it changes. It puts it to sleep. It puts water, life into dormancy. And then it can be awakened. Just putting a little bit of fresh squeezed lemon juice in water awakens its natural living state. The problem is with alkaline ionizer water machines, once the water travels through those machines, it can never be awakened again. It's killed. It's dead water because it was destructured by electricity from these machines. It can't be brought back to life. It's dead water going into people. And then dead water bringing bits and pieces, tiny nanoparticles of oxidized metal into their body. So let's talk about the next one. Number two on our list, apple cider vinegar, ACV, and ACV supplements taken internally. All through the years, people ate a lot of vinegar 
and drank a lot of vinegar. It was in all their condiments, in the dressings. It was on people's salads. It was in dishes. It's in mayonnaise. It was in everything. People got a lot of vinegar in them. Vinegar is acetic acid. It does a lot of damage to the body. Acetic acid vinegars damage your gastric glands. Your gastric glands produce your HDL inside your stomach. Gastric acid. Gastric acid breaks down your proteins, breaks down your food. If your food isn't broken down properly, it putrefies, it rots, it creates a problem. Vinegar also takes calcium out of your bones, not just your bones, but your teeth. It removes calcium. It's so acidic, the body goes into crisis, a crisis state, where your calcium leaches out of your bones to neutralize the acid. So, people lose their bones early in life. They get skull thinning. Their skull thins. So when they're older, down the road, years down the road, they're walking along, they slip on a little patch of ice, they land on the back of their head, and instead of having just your normal concussion or an egg on your head, a bump, you got a fractured skull. And then the pearly whites, people's teeth. Everybody wants to keep their teeth. But over time, their teeth fall apart. Even when it seems like it's going great for a while, Father Christmas comes. Father time, father past, creeps along, and then boom, teeth just start falling apart and nobody knows why. You're at the dentist, they're like, whoa, what's going on here? That's from years and years of vinegar eating. But keep this in mind, normal vinegar eating. Normal vinegar eating. You're hearing that and you're like, what is he talking about? Normal. What that means is, you had a hot dog with some relish on it. You had some vinegar. You had some mayonnaise on a sandwich. You had some vinegar. You had a condiment that you like, an organic one even, had some vinegar. You had a soup that had some vinegar. You're in a restaurant with a dressing, had some vinegar. Normal years of vinegar eating, not additional vinegar eating, because then out of nowhere came the old apple cider vinegar. Supplemental vinegar drinking. That's where the nightmare really kicks in. And you might be thinking apple cider vinegar is the best. Yeah, it is the best vinegar. If you're going to eat vinegar and drink vinegar, that's the one. I'll say it again. That's the one for sure. Get the one with mother in it, even a little bit better. But yes, apple cider vinegar, supplemental came along, drinking it, vinegar shots, making sure you're doing the apple cider vinegar chews. A lot of vinegar going in people that already we're doing vinegar that was normal along the way. But now, a new source of vinegar, a supplemental form, bringing that in, damaging their gastric glands, injuring their stomach intestinal linings, taking calcium from their bones and teeth. It's a new level of vinegar idiocracy. So let's talk about the next one. Fun, fun, fun. Bentonite clay and other clays taken internally. These clays, first of all, do not remove toxic heavy metals. They just don't remove toxic heavy metals. It's not possible. For decades, these clays have been in supplements. They've been in powders, gut powders, digestive health powders, all kinds of different supplemental powders, even pills and capsules. Bentonite clay still is used to this day and other clays as well. It's thrown in alternative medicine supplements. Clay supplements are too harsh on the intestinal tract lining, and if you're somebody with sensitive vagus nerves, if you're somebody with sensitive nerves altogether or a sensitive intestinal tract, it's a nightmare. A nightmare. Anybody with Crohn's colitis, IBS, celiac, or any kind of bloating constipation or some kind of intestinal tract problem or disturbance, it's a bloody nightmare. Clays should not be going inside anyone internally. The other thing is clays suffocate the intestinal lining of oxygen. What happens is good bacteria, you know, microbiome, everybody keeps on screaming about these days since there's nothing but a ton of intestinal tract experts now with the microbiome issue. Well, people who are worried about that don't realize good bacteria 
good bacteria, good fungus, things that we need inside of us. Well, it needs oxygen. It thrives on oxygen. Clays remove oxygen, suffocate that oxygen right out of the intestinal tract lining, right out of the gut. So now all your good bacteria, all your good microorganisms are dying because of the clay. And here's the funny part. Bad bacteria, bad fungus, bad yeast, bad mold thrives when oxygen is low. So clays are going in, suffocating oxygen, and all the bad stuff is growing up and thriving. It's a nightmare. An annoying thing about this is that good-hearted, even compassionate healers and doctors and professionals and practitioners are trying to fix people's guts because they think that's the problem behind everything. And they're handing out this stuff. And their supplements have clays in there. In the end, it's nobody's fault. It's the wild, wild west. And all of this is just one big experiment in alternative medicine. This takes us to our next one, caffeine. Caffeine supplements or anything with caffeine in it is a problem. I know people don't believe that till this day. And lately, some people have been taking medical medium information, of course, and they're talking about caffeine a little bit more, about not being good. But caffeine leaches calcium from the teeth and bones, just like ACV, just like vinegars. It's highly addictive. It's a psychoactive drug. And it destroys the adrenals over time. It brings us to adrenal fatigue, causes the adrenals to overwork overload adrenaline in the system. The adrenaline creates problems inside the body. Caffeine is an antagonist. It's an irritant. And in any form, in any kind of supplement or food, it's a problem. Chocolate included. And try to avoid supplements with green tea extract or green tea in them or green tea powders or matcha tea powders. Those are highly antagonistic to the adrenals as well. And when it comes down to chronic illness, caffeine should be avoided at all costs. So let's get on with it. We got a lot of ground to cover. Charcoal. That's the next one. Charcoal taken internally. This includes activated charcoal. Now, people think it's a great idea to take charcoal. It became a trend as if it's a good thing to detoxify something out of the body or out of the intestinal tract. Charcoal originally stemmed from conventional mindset of taking charcoal when someone swallows something highly poisonous to try to absorb it in some way. It's a theory, and maybe it does absorb something in some way. If someone was to swallow something poisonous, like paint thinner, they thought it was a drink, they were painting their room or painting their house, they grabbed it without looking and started chugging it down. Or if somebody grabbed bleach and started chugging that down, it has happened, it happens every day, and they go to the hospital because they're really ill. They're vomiting or they're unwell, they feel really sick, or they're just being rushed to the hospital because they called 911 and they told them to actually go to the emergency room. They get there, one of the things that they may offer, and it's just one, and they may not even do it, but in the past they have, they would give you a bunch of charcoal to swallow. It wouldn't be charcoal pills. It would be a charcoal liquid. And they would hope that that charcoal liquid would grab on or bind on or absorb some kind of poison or toxin. It's really a Hail Mary. Now remember, this is like a one-time thing. Or they'll give charcoal three times or four times during a poisoning. But it's a one-time thing in somebody's life. Unless they just go about drinking bleach or paint thinner, or something else all the time. But people don't normally poison themselves. But it happens. It's an accident, and it does happen. And in that case, and you're in the hospital, that's when you do charcoal, activated charcoal. You do activated charcoal, or whatever they decide to do for you, to try to save you, or save you from becoming really ill. Now, it is the Wild West out there, even in this situation, and activated charcoal may not absorb a poison, and maybe it will. They really don't know. Nobody really does. It's a guess. It's a theory, but they do it. And if I was poisoned, if I drank a whole bottle of paint thinner, which I don't recommend anybody to do, I would say, 
give me the activated charcoal in that moment too, if I was in the hospital. And I would also say, give me everything else or anything else you can do for that poisoning. Now, there's a difference between that Hail Mary in hopes that maybe there's a silver bullet for the moment and maybe there's not, but you're trying your best. There's a difference between that and taking it as a supplement every single day like so many people have. So then alternative medicine adopted it. They took this conventional medicine trick and then they said, well, use it every day. And then it got popular and everybody was swallowing charcoal pills. But it was never supposed to be a daily thing or monthly thing or yearly thing. And so many people damaged their intestinal linings, stomach lining, duodenum lining, colon lining, doing so. In the world of health right now, people are out there worried about getting enough nutrients. They're worried about assimilating food, digesting their food, breaking down their food. They're going to all these different alternative doctors. They're being told about the microbiome and how they have all these deficiencies and problems. People are already obsessed about this kind of thing. But lo and behold, what they don't understand is the charcoal situation. Charcoal suffocates the intestinal linings, not allowing nutrients to absorb, assimilate, or easily pass through the intestinal linings to the hepatic portal vein. In a nutshell, charcoal stops nutrients from getting to the person's organs, bloodstream, and brain. There are gut health professionals out there giving people charcoal in supplemental form. It's now in a lot of different gut health supplements and microbiome supplements. Problem is that that charcoal right there is suffocating the intestinal tract walls, allowing bad bacteria to thrive. Microorganisms that are not good and bacteria that's not good, the stuff you don't want in there, the stuff that's living in people gets a bump up because of the charcoal and the good bacteria gets a bump down. It suffers from the charcoal. And charcoal coats the intestinal tract walls. It coats the lining. It not only suffocates, but it coats it so much so that it creates a layer over it. That layer keeps toxins and poisons behind the layer inside the intestinal tract lining. It doesn't even allow it to exit if it wants it to. So when poisons and toxins need to leave the body via the intestinal tract, the charcoal blocks it gets in the way. And if someone's taking it every single day, it is like a powerful layer that's hard to break through. It becomes this absorbent powder that sticks and clings. It's not helping the person. It's not an emergency situation to use the charcoal in that moment. It gets built up. You get a buildup. It's a powerful buildup that's not working for you. It's working against you. It's not just an easy, no big deal buildup that just eliminates and you just go to bathroom and it all goes away. It stays there and can take months to get rid of. It can sit there on the lining for months and months, especially if someone took it every day for a while. Activated charcoal is just a bad, bad idea taken internally. This takes us to the next one, chlorella. A lot of people take chlorella. They think it's doing their body good. They think it's helping them. They're given guidance to take it. They see commercials out there. They see practitioners and different doctors recommending it. They see influencers promoting it all the time. And it's a bad idea. Another one. Chlorella does not bind on to toxic heavy metals properly. Far from it. And when it does bind on to a toxic heavy metal of some sort, it drops it in adjacent tissue, accelerating brain conditions. That means if someone has a whole bunch of different metal in their brain, oxidizing and creating problems, causing all kinds of different conditions, like everything from anxiety to depression to depersonalization, bipolar, OCD, anything, it can worsen. Or dementia, memory problems, memory loss, Alzheimer's. Somebody should not be on chlorella. What it does is it moves the metal around a little bit, dropping it next door to the problem, eventually creating a bigger problem, sometimes accelerating it really quick. The other thing is chlorella is not an antibacterial. It's not an antiviral. 
Rather, instead, it often contains bad bacteria, resulting in problems like a foodborne illness where someone gets really sick after having it. But people are mistaken in the area where they think it's antibacterial or antiviral. Another thing too, medical meme information was the only information talking about how it doesn't work for metals and so forth. And poachers took that information and act like they're experts now saying chlorella drops metals. Interesting, because there's no science to back it up or show it. There's no video of it inside somebody's brain dropping metal next to adjacent tissue. It's medical medium information, and it's helped people worldwide. Chlorella does not remove metals. It doesn't remove metals properly. It's often contaminated. It doesn't offer the body a lot, and it should be avoided. Okay, on to the next, chlorine dioxide. You've probably heard of it, and maybe you even tried it. Now this is an irritant on the intestinal tract, but it's not just an irritant. It can kill more good bacteria than bad bacteria. And in high dosages, it's toxic on the brain, toxic in the brain. The other thing, if you got a sensitive central nervous system and you get nauseous, that means it's irritating the vagus nerves. Plus, chlorine dioxide doesn't support the immune system. I get the methodology with it. It's like, okay, this kills bugs on the outside. Let's just see what happens internally. It should kill bugs internally. But what people don't know or understand is that the immune system kills the bugs and the immune system needs support. Chlorine dioxide doesn't help support the immune system. Now, there are things that help kill bugs, but they're gentle when you take them internally. Chlorine dioxide is not gentle when you take it internally. So if the day comes where someone says, hey, take this, this is a good idea, it's helped people, chlorine dioxide, I would avoid it at all costs. Now here's an interesting one, and it has a bit of history to it, cod liver oil. In ancient times, it was used. It was used during the Viking era. In the 19th century and 20th century, you can go to the pharmacy and you can buy a bottle of cod liver oil. Now keep in mind, it was 50% alcohol, 50% cod liver oil, one shot, and you're fast asleep. People loved cod liver oil back then, especially if they were told to ease off the alcohol, ease off the whiskey, because then they can still get their whiskey in some way and have a cod liver oil drink. But there's something really important to understand. 800 years ago, cod liver oil did not have mercury and dioxins in it. 800 years ago, cod liver oil was cod liver oil. Now, it's filled with mercury and all kinds of other metals, and it doesn't come out. Cod liver oil sustains it and the dioxins. Fish oils on a supplemental level add no benefit to the human body anyway. Cod liver oil did not help people in the olden day. It doesn't help people now. In the modern day, it's not going to help people, especially in the future. Medical medium information exposed how bad fish oils are. And now, science and research, alternative medicine, and conventional medicine are actually saying they're bad, they're not beneficial, and people should avoid them. Plus, cod livers can take on a lot of poison, a lot of metal, and a lot of toxin, a lot of dioxin versus a really small fish like a sardine liver. Another thing to remember too, most fish oils aren't coming from the liver of the fish. Cod liver oil is stemming from mostly the liver versus other fish that they're pulling fish oil from is not just stemming from the liver. But because it is coming from the liver, you're getting a lot more poisons and toxins and metals and dioxins. So when someone says, hey, try cod liver oil, I would think twice about it. Next stop on this train is colostrum. You might have heard of it before. People swore by it back years ago. Actually, a little over 20 years ago. It got big. And guess what? It did not help people. Far from it. What people don't realize, if you have chronic illness, 
It means something's wrong with your immune system. It means most likely there's a pathogen problem. The person suffering from low-grade viral infections or mid or high-grade viral infections. It means they got pathogens in their body, keeping them sick for a very long time. Because nobody knew why anybody was sick, they didn't know it was Epstein-Barr virus creating neurological problems. They didn't know it was the shingles creating frozen shoulder and so many different conditions that medical medium information first brought to light. Because they didn't know why people were sick all through these decades, they would come up with a new thing. A new thing that they thought was giving somebody something or helping them with their health in some way. So Colostrum took the spotlight for a little while. It was in the limelight. Everybody was like, whoa, I'm going to try that. Maybe that will fix me. It's that first bit of milk, that first drink that a baby calf gets or any kind of living thing on this planet that drinks milk from the mother gets. It's the first squirt. It's colostrum. People really liked colostrum because it really made sense. High nutrient, dense milk, containing antibodies, just what we think we need. We're sick, we're not well, we need something to support us. So colostrum was the perfect idea. But so it seemed. But what people didn't realize is they were sick with viruses. Epstein-Barr shingles, HHV-6, HHV-7, herpes simplex 1, herpes simplex 2, cytomegalovirus. virus, viruses in the herpetic family that were eating people's food choices. Viruses feed on foods, fuel themselves, create neurotoxins and dermatoxins, creating inflammation on nerves and in organs, keeping people fatigued, giving them brain inflammation and making them sick. So you have millions of people around the world, sick, fatigued, can't function, brain fog, they're losing the quality of their life, some sick for a decade or more, all kinds of different issues from brain inflammation causing ME-CFS or just chronic fatigue syndrome or just having other type of issues like thyroid problems, thyroid conditions, cysts, nodules on their thyroid, aches and pains, tingles and numbness, vertigo, dizziness, people just straight out sick, chronically ill. And when colostrum was thrown in front of them, it looked like a good idea. So when people took colostrum, they got sicker. Sometimes it took a little time, meaning they were taking colostrum for one month, two months or more. And then they started going downhill. They didn't realize the colostrum was contributing. Now, dairy isn't all just the same. So when someone eats dairy products, viruses love it. They eat it and fuel themselves with it. But cheese, milk, and butter is different than colostrum. The reason? Colostrum has more nutrients in it. You would think, well, that will help me and my health. But actually, it's the opposite. The viruses and pathogens love colostrum because it's more nutrient-dense. It's like being on a boat in the ocean and dumping over pails of pig's blood. Sharks will come out of nowhere. There will be a feeding frenzy. So the last thing you want to do is chumming. You do not want to throw chum in your body's waters. You don't want to throw chum in your bloodstream. And that's what's happening when you add colostrum. When you bring in that colostrum supplement, you're throwing chum into your system. Chum to attract viruses. And then there's the ethical thing, taking the colostrum away from the babies. It's just wrong. Now, if colostrum really worked and it stopped disease and it recovered people from debilitating conditions and symptoms and it truly was the answer, then maybe weighing that ethically could be possible. But no, it's just wrong because it doesn't even do that. It doesn't help people. It doesn't stop disease. It accelerates it. There are so many more problematic and damaging supplements. This isn't an exhausted list. Oh my God, like, welcome to a new YouTube channel. I have my boyfriend with me. He's taking colostrum and he's like a representative to a new colostrum company. It's really great. I can't wait for all of you to try it. It's making me feel so much better. I have energy and everything. You said... I need this. 
this is a good thing for me. But are you sure? How do we really know it's this year's trend? Oh, I see. Then please give it to me. Has it been tested? Thank you. I've been selected. If I take this, will I ascend with my health? Or will my body systems get arrested? Or will it descend like the collective? Or will my mind just bend? Or a few years later, I find out the industry were all wrong again. Like they constantly are and have been. I should have known. I should have been against it. I heard of a family friend trying the same thing long time ago. Can't believe they are pushing it again. And it never worked. It never was clean. They should have foreseen that the trends are purely obscene. I could feel it now. I should have left it. I was taken for a ride. I'm not the jerk, but I've been forsaken. Thank you. You're welcome. Much obliged. I'm receptive. My body and mind should be respected. But I know now it's just about the bottom line. And I believe your perspective. I could have sworn you said it wasn't subjective. I was right. I'm constantly getting let down again and again. Stop trying to defend. I need to keep up the good fight. It would be fine if it was worth it in the end because it's really time to start with something that truly heals. It's time for something new again. Original published medical medium information gets stolen and poached by podcast doctors, social media doctors, influencers, and medical clinics. Medical medium information has never yet been proven wrong by medical science and research. Instead, the opposite, only proven right and then taken from medical medium published material and used in the conventional and alternative health communities. Medical medium information continually sets the stage for medical science to understand chronic illness better. If you choose to share or use the original, unique content from the Medical Medium podcast, books, or Medical Medium social media, please cite where this information comes from, so others who see and learn of this information have a chance to know where it all originates, to give them an opportunity to heal so they don't end up losing years of their life searching for answers like so many have before them. The medical medium information here on this podcast doesn't come from broken science, interest groups, medical funding with strings attached, botched research, lobbyists, internal kickbacks, persuaded belief systems, private panels of influencers, health field payoffs, trendy traps, or gathered bits and pieces of gimmicky confusion. Because chronic illness is exploding like never before in our modern day history, it takes a greater force than us down here. It takes a helping hand from above. Medical medium information has street cred. It's an organic movement of countless people around the world healing. More healing stories of real people not being paid to tell their life-changing experiences of rising out of the ashes of sickness and entering into the light of full recovery, getting their lives back and finally healing when nothing else in the world of health could move the needle and get them better. The information on this podcast is not man-made. It comes from above, from a higher source. Whatever you believe in, whether God, the universe, the light, or the creator, or if you believe in nothing at all, that we're just floating through space together on this rock. Know that the information you hear on this podcast is separate from all the other noise out there. It comes from a different place, a pure, untampered with, advanced, clean, uncorrupted, original, primary source, a higher source, spirit of compassion.